more money mistakes people make during the holidays. It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Brian, I'm excited to talk about this because I'm hoping that we can save some of our people some pain because a lot of times in the holidays we get caught up in the excitement and the joy and the general level of merriness out there that we make some less than ideal decisions when it comes to how we're navigating our financial decisions. Well, yeah, this is a this is a, the most specialist time of the year. I mean, I really do get excited about Christmas and and the holidays and and it's it's one of those things where it, it just you should be happy. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times people will take that excitement, that energy, and they'll manifest it into bad behaviors. Mm -hmm. So we're here to kind of help put a little extra joy in your holiday season. So we're going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that we see. And it's interesting, when you think about these mistakes, a lot of them we discussed, Brian, are caused by societal pressures. There are pressures around uh, what you should do, how you should behave, what you should purchase, how you should fill in the blank. And I think that leads us to not making decisions that are necessarily in our best interest or the best interest of our loved ones, but in the best interest of what society is telling us we ought to do. So we want to encourage you, if you can, this holiday season to buck that trend and not fall into those traps. So let's jump into number one, and this is the easiest one, overspending. Yeah, this is a big one. And I think a lot of people fall prey to this because it's easy. We get caught up in it. And normally this starts around, ah, That little special time in November when there's all of these special sales and we just start losing our minds, right? And we do it under the guise of, oh, I'm going to get a good deal. I'm going to get a good deal. I'm going to get a good deal. And then over the next 30 days, we just start watching money flow out of the coffers. Well, it's also the part of human nature. I mean, look, we get locked into we want the nice car and other things because we want to look good to others. Well, gift giving has some of those elements as well. And so... You start going through the list. And then it's also a slippery slope. Um, Even in my own house, I mean, my wife calls me because she's stressed out about something. She goes, and I've got this neighbor that I'm like, why are we giving gifts to neighbors? I mean, I just, (laughs) just I don't see where, I don't see where we got into this. We're giving gifts to them. You get a gift, you get a gift, you get a gift. I mean, where does it stop? I mean, it's a, but so overspending can be part of that where you wake up one day and you realize, and this is the part we have in the the, the stats that Daniel pulled together, 36% of Americans are using debt to pay for the holiday. And then on average, and by the way, when I saw this average, I bet if we actually pulled this on, looked at the spectrum of it, there's a lot of people that, that they wish they were at $1,249. But there are a good portion of Americans are running up debt to pay for their Christmas purchases. Which is crazy. It's this idea of not only are you spending money, but now you're spending money that you don't necessarily have. You're actually borrowing from your future self in order to buy gifts or things for the present day. Which isn't great, but what's interesting is we've seen this new phenomenon where credit cards aren't the only way now to overspend during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Uh, 40% of Americans are now using buy now, pay later services, or at least that was a number that was in 2021. And I feel like this buy now, pay later, and maybe maybe I'm blind to this, Brian, you have to tell me, is a relatively like new phenomenon. This isn't something I remember always being there, always being available. Well, as we talked about in show meeting, um, I welcomed you to old man land Mm and the fact that you had a memory of something that stumped some of the content team. And that is the term layaway. Layaway. So uh, what I think is interesting, this whole buy now, pay later, man, these retailers, you got to give it to them. Mm -hmm. They're they're creative. creative. They are creative. If you're not going into rocket science or investment banking or insurance product sales, you're going into coming up with buy now, pay later. Because back when in the day, old man Bo brought this up, you would go to Kmart. Yep. And if you like something, they'd be like, "Ooh, so you like that. You'd like to make a purchase there, would you? Well, you know, I think your loved ones would love that, too. I can tell you don't have that money today. So what we're going to do is we'll set this to the side, mm-hmm. lay it away, if you will. And then you can come back later when you have money and close out this purchase. Right. But you had to actually pay for the gift or pay for the thing to be able to take it home and use it and stuff. Well, it seems like society has now changed that. Yeah, with they skipped that step about they, paying for it. That's you know, right. Coming back with the money. And then, because basically, 
you would start the shopping process a few weeks to a few months early, mm-hmm. and they'd say, hey, that's all right. We're going to keep it. It's not going to be gone. We're going to make sure we, we keep it here nice and safe for you. But you show up and pay. We skipped the pay mm-hmm. step, and now you just buy now. It has a ring to it. Pay, pay later. later. And, yep. But the, the thing is, is, and Daniel's good enough that he gave us the research on this, is that unfortunately 42% of people who are using buy now, pay later – are making late payments. And you know, as soon as you miss those payments on the time you're supposed to, that's when they got you. That's That's when all the additional fees and other things. And by the way, this is one of those things where I think a lot of young people, Bo, they're very proud of themselves that they don't use credit cards or Mm -hmm. they don't have credit card debt. But yet these are the same people that are falling into the trap. It's the younger generations that are falling in the trap of this buy now, pay later Kind of just stay clear. If yeah, you can. I want to say I think it was sixty percent of millennials and sixty four percent are parents with young children that are starting to use these types of services. And, and on the surface, it sounds decent, right? It's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna instead of paying all this money now, I'm gonna take it, and there's no interest. It's not gonna accrue. It's not gonna be like a credit card. However, what it happens is you fall into this psychological trap where you do start overspending, and you begin to believe, uh, you know what? I can buy anything in the world for just a few bucks a month at a time. Daniel was talking to us today. He said he was ordering some groceries and he had to use Instacart or something. And they were letting him do a buy now, pay later over four months on groceries. I mean, think about that. You're paying for groceries over the next four months that will be rotten and consumed before the end of that pay now, uh, that, that payment date. It's just not something you want to fall into. It's not something you want to fall prey to this holiday season. So let's talk about how do you avoid this, Bo. The first thing is make sure with your holiday and Christmas season, talk to your loved ones about what expectations are and assume and find out and ensure everyone's on the same page. You you, in Mm pre-show, we were talking about the movie Four Christmases. Four Christmases, yep. And there is a classic scene in there where Vince Vaughn, Reese Witherspoon, they're the fancy-dancy yuppie um, couple who are now visiting their relatives. And they show up and... The, they start the scene, the gift opening scene, and they're like, man, it was tough staying within that $10 <laughs> price limit. And then you can see Vince and Reese, they kind of look at each other because they bought Xboxes and all these other crazy things for the relatives and the kids. And it just was hilarity ensued because as you can imagine, when and I feel there are so many stars in this movie because when you think about who's the, the Tim McGraw is the father right. of one of the, 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 the kids and he opens up a flashlight and he's ticked off that it's a flashlight when his brother just got an uh-huh. Xbox from the uncle. So guys, just make sure you know what the pricing elements, cause I'll also save you from running up this debt, running up the consumer purchases that just aren't necessary. And maybe even focus on, Hey, if the adults, cause a lot of times the adults feel stressed with all this gift giving, how about let's focus on the kids because it's better to give than to receive. And let's really make sure that this aligns to what we're looking for. Yeah. I think one of the things that my family does, is we have spending limits that we put in place and we've even moved to doing Secret Santa because now there are so many nieces and nephews and kids that if all you were doing was buying a small gift for every person, you would still spend a lot of money. So understanding what actually works makes a ton of sense. So that helps with like the other parts of the family. But I think a lot of people fall into the trap buying for their own children. You're not worried about necessarily buying for nieces and nephews and that sort of thing. You start overspending just because you want your kids to have that Christmas that you never had. You want them to experience the thing that you never got to experience. Well, one of the things to keep in mind is it's okay if your kids don't get everything on the list. I mean, one of the great things that we're able to teach our kids through the holiday season, and this sounds very Scroogey, I know I'm going to get made fun of for it, is scarcity, but also deferred gratification. Like maybe, oh, okay, well, we didn't get that right now, but we did get this. And maybe what about, we can think about for your birthday or for your fill in the blank and move it on. I think parents fall in this trap of thinking, I've got to give my child everything that they want this Christmas or else they're not going to have a pleasant Christmas. Yeah, that's why I think it's nothing wrong with reminding the North Pole that Santa doesn't have to give the kids Mm -hmm. everything. Scarcity does create some opportunities. There's a reason that Santa back during the Great Depression was giving out fruit Mm -hmm. instead of the latest and greatest things. Now, look, they didn't have electronics and Xboxes and everything else, but you get the point. Is it let's be disciplined, let's create some scarcity, but still create happiness because at the end of the day, it the 
thought that counts. If you want to give the well thought out, the, the, the gift that has a lot of love and a lot of the person built into it, that, those are the most special gifts. Because most of the times the consumption stuff, the, 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 the knickknacks, the candy, the, the electronics, the kids won't remember that stuff anyway. I, I, that's what I was going to say. Well, a really easy exercise is if you have older children or if you have siblings, go ask them, hey, what were your favorite Christmas memories? And I think you'd be amazed to hear very rarely is it ever a specific gift. Oh, I remember the Christmas that I got this, or I remember this. It's the time that you spent together. It's the activities that you did. It's the memories that you built. So make sure you focus on that because a lot of that stuff can be done without spending a ton of money. But let's get to the one. This is the one I was most excited about. Let's talk about number two, short-sighted gifts. Bo, just because the media tells you something's a great idea doesn't mean it really is. And by the way, they're not even trying anymore. I think they're at the point that they're making fun of us. They're like, oh my gosh, those... Those knucklehead consumers out there, they fell for it last year. Let's kick it up a notch, and we have some examples oh, yeah. to show you what we're talking about. Look at these short-sighted gifts. First one, guys, yeah, if you Yeah, wanna, I remember when this commercial oh, came out. You came in livid. Uh, like, you I, I did get mad about this. upset. Well, you called the content team to order. This was what? A year, two years ago, a year ago, I, I can't remember. They, when this they, they roll this thing out about every year because it must work. But it, for me, it's a big eye roll because you have this couple that's obviously loaded. I mean, when you look at this house uh -huh. that they have, and it comes out, and he's like, I got the most special gift for you. And he comes out and he's like, I bought you an SUV and I bought myself this pickup truck. And then the, 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 the laugh part is supposed to be she wants his truck but what really ought to be laughable is these knuckleheads buying vehicles and stuff without talking to their loved ones so this is the vehicle purchase yep. but gmc didn't stop here they're like like i said they're not even trying anymore they are daring you to pay attention to these bad decision making because this year gmc came out and look at this they start off with this funny commercial where the husband buys this dog that's running through the snow, which we're going to get to. Buying animals, that's a long-term commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're and then the stuff. husband, the wife surprises him with this gift of a brand new truck, so much so that he's draped over the hood right now, basically kissing the emblem of GMC, because they want to remind you, your consumption is what really brings happiness. This is a disaster. So you may be thinking, well, that seems outlandish and that just doesn't seem accurate you think about what would happen if i were to do this if i were to surprise my spouse this well there was a great clip that we want to show you that we think is a more realistic representation of what would actually happen if you followed some of these car uh, manufacturers holiday gift giving advice Let, let's jump in so this Christmas, get her something extraordinary during the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Nathan, you didn't. With flexible financing, 0% APR, there's Zero, never been wish. a better time to buy or lease a new Lexus. Merry Christmas, baby. Are you kidding me, Nathan? <laughs> Did you seriously buy a car without asking me? Well, because for Christmas... This is a major purchase. <laughs> right, but it, it was a December to Remember. It's a Lexus. We don't have the money for this, Nathan. I think that's much more realistic. That's the way that it would go, right? Like that's Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Saturday Night Live. I often think about the celebrities when they show up in the content meeting ideas, and I'm like, this commercial had been waiting to be made because it is a joke. Like I said, these ad agencies, these companies that are selling us these overpriced things that are bad financially for you, they don't think you're paying attention, nope. so good on you, Saturday Night Live, for calling reality. But let's let's jump into each one of these. Let's talk about how we can actually avoid making these mistakes. Well, I think the, some of the mistakes you need to think about is when it comes to making large purchases, when it comes to doing that, it ought to be something you decide together as a family. You should not jump into anything that has a long-term commitment without really consulting the other parties that are involved. So obviously, buying a vehicle is not something you should go at alone. We mentioned a second ago, buying animals is not something you should go at alone. Unfortunately, a very sad statistic is we know 
that a lot of uh, animal shelters are actually overrun following the holiday season because people give animals as gifts, it's neat and fun and exciting when they're puppies or kittens, but puppies and kittens turn into big animals and big dogs with a lot of commitments that go along with that. Don't force that upon someone unless you've actually had a conversation with them around what it is they're actually looking for. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you, you want to take away my, my, my Christmas spirit. Tell me that there's a bunch of dogs in the animal shelter because just people are irresponsible. That's just, what mm-hmm. type of human are you? Let's, let's talk about how do you avoid this. First thing... Don't give expensive gifts, especially expensive gifts with ongoing costs. I mean, like uh, going back to four Christmases. Now, look, it's 2008. Satellite dishes were an awesome thing. We weren't streaming. But it is one of those things I thought it was interesting. If you give somebody something that has an ongoing monthly subscription, mm-hmm. did you really set them up? I mean, that didn't play out very well with Clark Griswold mm-hmm. and the, um, the the whole jelly collection. So so don't don't do anything that has ongoing prices. Or what if you get somebody a vehicle, but then you don't think about the cost of the insurance for that vehicle and the maintenance and the fuel and the fill in the blank on the different things that go into that. When you give someone a gift like that, you're not necessarily giving them a true gift. You're giving them an obligation for something they have to carry through into the for, into the future. And you know, and time commitments are like that's where the animals Absolutely. comes in. And then I thought this was something um, I won't say the name of which content member shared because in case their family watches this, but they were talking about their grandmother every year opens up a brand new like tablet, uh-huh. like an iPad or whatever, Android. And and the grandmother is like, oh, thank you. And then goes and she I'm puts sure, that puts right next to closet, all the other tablets. Next she's to the never six did. others she's received. So just make sure that the, the, the gifts actually reflect what the needs are for your family members. Um, because short-sighted gifts, they can they can just not represent what you wanted to get out of the holiday season. All right, so now let's talk about a third thing we see people do during the holiday season. And this one, I'm afraid we see a ton happen. And I think even I, or even we, fall prey to this. And it's overcommitting. It's recognizing that there, during this holiday season, there's all these different things that I want to do. And we end up stretching ourselves so thin by committing to every possible thing we could commit to. I love when we show, um, we didn't. we didn't put it in here. Um, because we're only half good at what we do. I, mean, I, did, I just thought of this. Um, but Reby has this favorite slide that we have that has your commitments uh-huh. versus you know your time and, yep. and life and so forth. And it is so crazy. The messy middle. We talk about the messy middle all the time is that people with kids will know that your life is no longer your own. Obviously, you have kids. You've expanded the family. But unfortunately... You have a lot of people that are excited that you've grown the family, mm-hmm. and you find yourself loading up your vehicle or traveling on a plane with a bunch of people who are worried, or is your baby going to cry around them? You're stressed out to the nines yep. over this thing, and it's all because you're overcommitting to make sure everybody maximizes their memories, and that's so great, but I'm just telling you, there's a reason we find out that 38% of Americans say their stress increases significantly mm-hmm. During the holidays, sixty percent say their mental health is negatively impacted. Are you kidding? This is supposed to be the greatest time say, of the it's year, exactly counter- and somehow intuitive. we've turned this negative. How how have we done this to ourselves? Let's talk to people. How do you make this better? Yeah. So here's one of the best ways you can avoid overcommitting is figure out how to maintain healthy habits even during the holidays. I mean, none of us are going to stick to our routine perfectly. None of us are going to stick to our diet regimens or workout regimens or sleep consistency or fill in the blank. But the more consistent you can be, the more healthy habits you can carry through the holiday season, the better off you will likely set yourself to not be one of those people that are overstressed and end up having suffering from uh, less happy mental health during the holiday season. So I, I want to give everybody a challenge because Christmas is coming up in the next two weeks. And um, I think a lot of you probably go remember this show is because it, it comes out right during the holidays. And you're going to be like, man, I just I do not want to do this. So do this for me. A little planning goes a long way. If you find yourself overstressed mm-hmm. during this holiday season... In January, February, while you have months before we roll this right around again, start the communication. Because, yep. I mean, just just share, hey, look, the kids, it's harder traveling. There's a lot of logistical issues. 
I think we're going to do it this way. And if you, I, I can tell you my solution. This is how to, you know. This is one of the things on tips to do. I realized trying to make both sides of the family happy, my spouse's side, my family. So you know what we did? We said, let's just go on a cruise. Let's mm-hmm. go do. You know, and I know the pandemic didn't make this easy, but now that we are. Getting beyond that point, we're like going on our first Christmas cruise. We've done Thanksgiving cruises. It is so glorious when you can just bring everyone together so you can actually enjoy each other, enjoy the time together, enjoy the memory making. That's how you do it. But you've got to have effective communication to make that possible. Yeah, I think communicating is huge. I mean, one of the things that we do is once we started having kids and we live out of state from all of our family, we said, hey, look, we can't travel down for Thanksgiving and then turn right around and travel down again for Christmas. So we can do either or every year. We won't be able to do both anymore. And it's been wonderful. It's made the holiday season much more enjoyable for our family, much less stressful. And it makes the time that we do get to spend that much happier because we're not stressed out about having to do the back and forth and back and forth. So one of the things you have to figure out how to do is know how to say no, know how to effectively not commit to every possible thing that comes your way. So would you say it's like a, oh, 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 no. Uh, yep, that's exactly how <laughs> I think. I think that's how you should do it. Uh, you call your relatives and do it that way. I, it's going to be great. Uh, I don't it's gonna be really um, and then, you know, this is one of those things where I think you, I didn't like how this was worded, but I kind of get what it was saying. And this is where you could you could sprinkle in the communication with this is just prioritize what you're going to put your time into, Mm -hmm. you know, because look, you might get invited to multiple neighborhood parties, work parties, family parties. You just got to prioritize how are you going to do it all without adding that stress element. And the end of the day, you have to ask, what is the ultimate why? Like if you're going to a holiday party, is it because there are people there that you really want to build relationships Mm -hmm. with that you love? Or is it just because you got the invitation and you're trying to just check the box and do it? I don't know that going through the holiday season, we have to check the box quite as often as we do, we should focus on those things that truly matter in this holiday season instead of allowing ourselves to just blow through it and not actually enjoy the time at all. Bo, let's talk about this fourth one. Okay. This one's important. Not acting your age. Now, look, this is, this is life is so unfair. I mean, when you're younger and you're broke, <laughs> you're poor, you don't have money, and you're like, man, it would be fun if I could just eat whatever I wanted. I could drink whatever I wanted. I could be merrymaking and all this other stuff. But let me tell you where this doesn't start. Losing your mind at the company Christmas party because it's unlimited open bar is probably a good idea that you need and a reminder that you need it's to act your age. It's probably not a good idea. Well, yeah. It's but, probably because, not a good idea. Yeah, to lose definitely your mind not a good idea. Because, but, but here's these stats. He Listen, it's probably a good 67. Idea. Look, we do have our Christmas party this Thursday. <laughs> I want to say ours is this week. So, it is if not you know, a good if you're idea. You're listening, team. team. I said it was a good idea. No, don't don't hear that. 67 percent said that at least one coworker. We'll drink too much at the office Christmas mm-hmm. party. 75% say holiday parties is where they truly find out where their coworkers are like. Now, now I don't think I, that's I, a good thing. To, I, don't, I don't mean it's like, oh, that's where we got really close to our coworkers, really got to know each other. I think they're saying 75% of people said, oh, I saw the part of my coworker that I was happy did not come to work. Well, right? I, I do think it's, it's, it's like I shared. I've, I've been working since the 90s, you know, in a professional capacity. And I still remember one of the firms I worked at in the 90s. And look, this is tattoos. Every, I mean, I probably could look around the content team, including the guy sitting to my left, and be like, yep, loaded up with some of those tattoos. But um, you know, I'm an older guy. Yeah, tattoos were old, so. in the '90s. They were. It was more renegade than it's now. You're more renegade if you don't have tattoos if you're under 40 now. But it's. But I can remember going to a Christmas party in the mid '90s, and, and our sweet administrator, who we've all worked with for years fully backless shirt and there was like a full on dragon that was just like and it was a talk of the there. party right and everybody was like whoa did you see that dragon tattoo it was just one of those things so and that, look there's nothing wrong with that especially I probably sound like an old man because well, no, you because do. actually because like like I said everybody has said but it is one of those things where maybe if you work at a CPA firm and you know that you're you're around a bunch of just boring people especially in the 90s 
don't unleash the dragon at the company Christmas party. I mean, it's just like you don't pull out the CPA life stomach tattoo, you know, for everybody. That's right. You, you that's, save that only for, for special few. moments in life. But it is one of those things, just make sure you're acting your age, mm-hmm. um, because that, that comes into a lot of things with family members, coworkers, and so forth. I was going to say, it's not just isolated to the work Christmas party. That's certainly somewhere where you want to make sure that you're making wise decisions. But look at this stat. 63% of Americans say that at least one of their family member will drink too much this Christmas. And that's, you know how that goes. The person shows up and, oh man, you got different political beliefs, but you you open the glass of wine or you start <laughs> drinking the eggnog. And then all of a sudden somebody says, well, hey, I'd, I want you to tell me this. And oh boy, gloves are off yeah. and things get, just be mindful of that. 54% say that someone will apologize the next morning for something that was said at the Christmas party. So act your age. Make sure that you go into um, ma- go into these events in a mature manner, in a mature fashion. You don't lose your mind and do something that you'll end up regretting. Well, let's, let's actually put, what did we put on the slide on how to avoid this? And you kind of hit on one of them, Bo, is that, look, don't bring up uncomfortable subjects. That's Don't, huge, you know, huge. look, if you know that multiple people in your family, if y'all all have different political views or other things, don't drop bombs and hand grenades and then just wait and watch it. You don't have to do that. I mean, because we already, there's so much division in the world. This is the time that we're building memories. We're merrymaking. We're d- focus on what you're bringing to the conversation. It's just not worth it to blow it up and then have all this uncomfortableness mm-hmm. when it, I mean, come on, guys, seriously. And then the other thing is know yourself, right? Like if you, No, understand, especially if you're not someone who drinks often, or maybe you are someone who drinks often, know where your limits are. Set yourself. When you go to a Christmas party, say, I'm going to have one drink. I'm going to have two drinks. Just because it's an open bar or just because the bottles are open, don't lose your mind. Go into it with a plan and a strategy so you can keep yourself from getting into trouble. You have to have a little bit of self-control, but I promise you, yourself in the morning will likely thank you for doing it. Well, yeah. That. I mean, everybody, I, we had that stat. I think we shared it. Is that so many people have to wake up the next day and apologize yeah, or call somebody? I mean, do not, you do not want that regret because talking about ruining the greatest season of the year is by you thinking and, and realize this is where that, that um, Richard Branson quote comes in, where sometimes with alcohol, you think you're actually, it's making you more fun, but in reality, it's just stealing the happiness mm-hmm. from the next day. So just make sure that happiness really isn't falling into the crater because you have to call everybody with apologies because you got too carried away the night before. Look, we're, we're out of time, so I'm not even going to talk about open bars at CPA conventions. That's for, <laughs> we'll save that for a whole nother element, but it is one of those things where hopefully you guys can tell. I mean, I showed up all in the spirit. Bo showed up as... He's not Bob Cratchit. He's more of the Ebenezer Scrooge here. But it, but it is one of those things where I think you can tell we love working together. We love working with the team here. We love you guys. And, and there's a lot of thankfulness. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just, it, there's so much that I hope that you really will use this holiday season to make sure all those that you love, that you care about, just tell them. I mean, be, mm-hmm. be very open with your communication about that. Because every year is just not guaranteed, Mm -hmm. as we've seen coming out of this pandemic. And I mean, we are so thankful for what you guys have allowed us to do. And we hope that, you know, you will have an incredible season, travel safely. And then just from the team here, we we appreciate all you've provided. Would you have any closing remarks on that or are you good? I, I would echo that as well. We are so thankful for you. We hope you have a wonderful, happy, merry, jolly, joyful holiday season. We thank you so much for letting us be a part of your financial lives. I'm your host, Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen. Holly jolly Christmas money got team out.